Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Gabe with Indigo Software, genuine Microsoft software for less. In today's video, we're covering a new video with Microsoft Project 2024, and we're gonna take you from start to finish building an entire project plan. For demonstration, this project will be this month's video production for Indigo Software. So I'm going to be filling out all of the tasks associated with that and creating relationships between them to help me best manage the project. Before we get started with this video, if you guys are interested in purchasing Microsoft Office, Windows 10, Windows 11, remote desktop licenses, or a wide variety of other Microsoft software at a great price, be sure to check out Indigo Software. We'll leave links down below. So without further ado, let's jump in. All right, guys, so we're gonna get started inside of Microsoft Project. For today, I'm gonna to go ahead and get started with a blank project because there isn't necessarily a template that would work best for me here. So I'll go ahead and open a blank project and let's start getting to work. All right, guys, so here we have a starting point. This is basically a list of tasks that I know I need to get done before July. Now, in this format in Microsoft Word, it's not particularly helpful because it's kind of just a bunch of jumbled words together and it doesn't offer me much clarity or structure around how to do this project. That's where Microsoft Project is going to come in. So I'm gonna use this as my reference and I'm going to start plugging things into Project. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Okay, so here we are inside of Microsoft Project. In the bottom right, I'm gonna use this slider to zoom in a little more so we can see what we're doing. And I'll do that on the right-hand side. Am I able to do that on the right-hand side? I'm gonna bring my task list also more towards the center so I have a bit of additional room. We wanted to make one quick note that if you aren't already familiar with how to use Microsoft Project, we'd highly suggest watching our beginner's guide. We'll link that right here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start plugging in the task names one by one. Now, I'm gonna also put these in chronological order, which is generally a good idea when making your project, but it's not entirely necessary because we also have some additional settings that we're gonna be configuring along the way. So I'll start with the task name. And for me, I'm just gonna pretty much type this out in full or maybe shorten it up where I can. So we have research and create video list. Now I'm gonna click and drag between these two to make this longer so I can see it all. For the remainder of these, I'm just gonna copy and paste what needs to get done. Now just to explain a little bit here, all of these tasks are a part of what's necessary to produce these videos for the channel. And this is actually a real example of what I do on a monthly basis. Now what's particularly helpful about this is I can manage and keep track of what tasks got done by when, and also when I'm gonna be finished with certain tasks, so I can make sure that I'm overall on time. Now, I've got a few more entries to put here, so I'll go ahead and skip to when I'm done with those. Okay, so I've entered all my tasks. The next important thing for me is gonna to be to add my duration. Now, I was breaking mine down by the minutes. It might make it easy just to set this by the day. Now, I can also add fractions of a day. So, for example, researching and creating the video list, I have for six hours. I'll keep that as a day. I think that's fine. And then for stuff like this, where you know it might take me 30 minutes to an hour, maybe I'll just put like 0.2 of a day. I'll do that for several of these. And then just like Excel, I can click and drag down to actually apply this to more. So let me run through this here. Charging batteries takes a day. And then here we have three to five days. So for this, I'll shoot for the longer end, be more conservative, and I'll say five. Backup footage is fine, that only takes a couple hours. Now we're looking at about four to seven days for editing the videos. So I'll put seven days. Exporting the videos is one day. Creating thumbnails is one day. Uploading videos is maybe half a day. And these two are fine. All right, so now I can configure the start and finish days for these. Now by entering the start day, it's going to calculate the duration and it will also list the finish day. So I started production for this month around the 10th and I'm gonna put that for several of the tasks here, maybe all the way up down until selecting the wardrobe. Now, in terms of setting up the film equipment and clearing the memory cards, all of that, I'm actually gonna move the task number eight above. It would make more sense if that was there. And maybe this start date is also the same. This is for actual filming, which I started this past Friday. So I can put all of these to Friday and we know that by the 26th, the filming will be completed. Okay, and then in terms of actual production and filming, that's when I start with all of these tasks. These are like requisite tasks or tasks that I need to do before actual filming. 
and I started filming on the 17th. So I'll drag this all the way down to where I film and we can see that filming is going to wrap today, which I am on track for actually. We'll go ahead and back up footage. I'll probably do this the same day that I'm done filming and we can start editing on the 23rd as well. Now I'm gonna set a start time for filming, which for this month was on the 16th. I'll drag this all the way down to film videos and then for backing up and starting editing, we have the 20th. So I'll drag that down, edit, okay. And then export videos, we can start on the 30th and the rest of these tasks will be completed on the 30th. We can see that this is starting to populate out on the Gantt chart on the right. Now, in order to make this a little bit better, we know that there are certain requirements, certain tasks that have to happen before the next task can start. And that's what we call a predecessor. So I'm gonna go up the list starting at the bottom because each of these will have the top one above it as a predecessor. So by dropping down this list, I can select the right tags and descriptions as the predecessor. I'll click now in the box here. And if I want, I could also simply type the row. So 14, 13, 12 is a predecessor for this, 11, 10, and we'll keep going up the list, eight. I can't really film until I've charged the batteries and cleared the memory cards and set up the lights. So that's gonna be six, seven, and eight, all three of those. Okay, and then these don't really have requisites, the new video list. The predecessor for that would be creating the video list. That's pretty much it. So everything that has a predecessor now is filled out accordingly. And we can see that reflected in the Gantt chart by these arrows. Okay, now I'm gonna separate these into pre-production, production, and post-production. So to do that, I'll select all of my rows for pre-production, which is everything up until film videos, basically. Actually, that's everything up into approved new video list. We'll call it that. Okay, now the next thing I might wanna do is create summary tasks. This is gonna make it even better to track everything that's happening. I'm going to separate these into pre-production, production, and post-production. So I'll click on my first row and I'll insert a task above it. In this box under task name, I'm gonna write pre-production. So I'll pre-production hyphenated, and then I'll select rows two through five. So researching and creating the video list through approving the new video list falls under my pre-production. I'll indent that, which now goes under pre-production. So I can use this arrow to drop and hide or show the pre-production tasks. I'm gonna repeat that for production. So we'll insert above row seven, as seven is my first production task. And in this box, I'll type production, and then I'll click eight through 11, and we will click to indent. Okay, and then in order to indent below that, I'm gonna select seven, which is production, and indent the, to the left. That's going to make it not fall under the pre-production summary. So now I can grab eight through 11 and indent that to the right, which makes a new summary task production. We'll do this again under row 12. I will click insert. We'll type post production. And then with this entire row selected, I will again press the outdent task. You could also use keyboard shortcuts for this if you'd like. And I'll select the rest here and we will indent the tasks. So we have our summary tasks. And what's nice about this is it compiles the duration. It also compiles the start and finish. So we're on track to be finished by the 1st of July. And we know when we're starting, we know the duration that each of the phases will take us. And again, we can hide and show our progress here, which is also going to reflect on the Gantt chart. We can see these little brackets on the Gantt chart and that's showing the various phases of production. All right, next up, I'm gonna go over to the resource sheet. So I'll change from the Gantt chart to the tracking Gantt. Now, the next thing I might wanna do is add resource names. I can either go to the team planner so I can click that and add those in here, but I'm just gonna remain on the Gantt chart page here and I'll add the resources underneath the columns here. So we were on the Gantt chart in the view tab, I'm gonna to go to resource sheet and this is gonna allow me to add in some resources. Resources in this case are gonna be my team members who are assisting me with this. So we have the musician and we also have the editor and those are gonna be my two primary resources. I could change the type if I would like to for example, work or labor. You can also change that to material or cost. We're gonna add in their hourly rate. Editor is $150 an hour, and the musician is $10 an hour, let's just say, for example. And now I can go back to my Gantt chart, and for the tasks that are relevant, so for me, that's going to be editing videos, I'm gonna add the editor. And then in terms of the production, again, we have these songs that are being created by the musician, and I'll select the musician for that. 
All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. If you have any questions about anything that we've covered, drop those in the comments below, and we'll get back with you as soon as we can. Again, if you're interested in purchasing genuine Microsoft software at a great price, be sure to check out Indigo Software. We'll have those links down below. As our channel continues to grow, we're constantly looking for new video topic ideas. If you have any suggestions of your own, we strongly encourage you to comment those below. Most viewer commented video requests get made into actual videos on our channel. Lastly, a like and subscribe would be greatly appreciated as it helps to support the channel. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you guys next time.